Hello guys, back again, and today I'm going to be talking about the Voxcom, or Opcom, depending where you are in the world. I've used this a few times in different videos, and mentioned it in one, and someone pointed out that maybe I need to explain what it is. Well, the Opcom, or Voxcom, is actually this unit, and it plugs into your diagnostic port which is down there and it allows you to basically read all error codes on all ECUs all everything basically from the radio through to the engine lights the works it also allows you to clear the codes if there are any and read what they are it gives you a bit more detail than like the handheld, they know the little ones you get that give you like a P0 whatever number. This actually gives you the number and sort of what it is. Well, it just leads you to what it is. What you need, right, when you get this, these normally cost about 15, 20 pounds off eBay. Or you can go a little bit more up to about 30 to 40 I've seen them for. But... You need we make sure that you get the ones that have the software. Me, I got this one off of eBay, it only cost me a fiver, but it didn't have its software. Luckily, I found a guy on eBay that was selling the software quite cheaply. So I got that, and lo and behold, it all works. One issue I did have, which I sort of had to look up, was when you install it. Or well, when you plug it into your PC or laptop or whatever, it will register it as an Opcom version 2, I think this was. That won't work with the Opcom software. Go figure. What you need to do is you need to go into your system settings and device manager. And you need to update the driver to what's called a serial converter. The drivers for it are actually in the directory for your software. There'll be a folder drivers. In there there'll be a couple of folders but there'll also be a file in there. I can't remember what it's called, I think it begins with an M. But that's the thing you need to select. The best way to do it is just select the folder that called drivers and it'll find it for you. And then it'll install it as a serial converter not the Voxcom. right so just to verify you've got it installed correctly if you go to that settings and go to test interface there you go it will come up with something similar to that depending on your firmware version my um, copy of the software came with a firmware version updater which is that thing there and it came with a load of files this is the most up-to-date one in that lot. I haven't bothered to search for any others because this one works. So, anyway. Once you've got it verified that the laptop can see it. You can then go back. Right. You then need to plug it in. And everyone knows where your OBD port is. So, you just plug it in there. Get in there. There we go. That's what she said. Oh, shush. Right. You go to Diagnostics, you have to choose your vehicle, like year, and your vehicle model. As you can see it works with a number of different voxels. And just for quickness, this is where you get to, if you need any information about the car it will bring you up there. If you go to quick vehicle DTC I haven't seen any detailed difference between detail let's find out what detail does basically it'll access all of the CAN buses and all that stuff and it will give you your search so it's, it's going to every module if it'll focus yeah, I'm going to focus at it no anyway ah oh, there we go right it's Searching all the modules for any error codes, as you can see, it says if they're present. It also has the error codes. I have one in my underhood sensor, which I know about. 
for some reason, when I put my... I played around with the settings to for the rain sensor, which I don't have yet. I have the sensor, I just haven't installed it. But now it seems to think it's always got a sensor. I don't understand. The only other thing I can think of is that with the sensor, I got those lighting controls. And being they've got the auto function, maybe the system's reading that they've got that switch, but it can't read the rain sensor. That's the only thing I can think of. It'll be interesting to find out if that sorts itself out when I do that. I uh, also have one on my Bluetooth module, which is microphone open, open circuit, which I don't understand. Microphone's connected. It's not open. I don't know. Anyway, when you've got your codes, you have a few options. Come on. Yeah, there we go, right. You have a few options. You can, like clear them so it will then do it again it will clear them all so if you've fixed a problem you can clear them and then it'll you can rescan and see if they reappear and they're all clear so now I should where's my mouse there it is right now if I refresh the list Hopefully, they should all disappear. Oh, bloody thing. The Underhood Electrical Centre, is it there? Oh, yep, still there. There's, that's an ongoing one, and we know about that. And I'm thinking the fo mobile phone portal should bring something as well. Yeah, there you go, same as they were. So anyway, what you can do, once you've got, your co got this up, if you go into the relevant one that's got a problem, just double-click on it, see you bring up all this stuff this is the interface for each module you can change variants and things with as well but if you go to default codes it will explain what it is as I said no communication with rain sensor probably because the rain sensor is in my boot in a box so you know but you can clear that but as we saw it just comes back again but yeah if we go back out not going to be much right back out again. All right, you've got all these other sections that you can use. Engine, and let's say you give you access to all kinds of different things. Like this is, you have to know your proper engine type, which you can find out in vehicle details if you're not sure. You know, and it gives you all access to the fault reading that way as well. You also, in every section, have the measure block section which gives you details about you know, like battery voltage and all different stuff like that there's loads of different bits and obviously they change when you're not when your car's running and what have you you say engine speed's not there desired oils and you know so yeah that's all to do with the engine there's loads of different things um yeah, in here is where you activate a few different things like the clutch switch if you want to add to cruise control. You can sort of like, actually no, looking at that it just checks it's there. No, sorry about that, I was wrong. You go back and back. I think, ah, yes, programming, it gives you all of the different things you can program. Like, look. You can even program if you change the size of the tyres so your speed speedometer works properly. So I've only just seen that, and that's pretty cool. Program variant. As you see, look, this is where you can put in... You have to tell the computer, the car that you've got uh, if you retrofit cruise control or whatever else you want to do. Yeah, okay. 
you can program that so it changes a few things you have to when you fit cruise control you have to enable it in about three different places i think one of them is here obviously i think the other is the um rear electrical center and i think the third is the instrument control center i think anyway you got loads of these different as you see you got all these different kinds of settings you can change and play with this is where a lot of the stuff is most of the ecus yeah that's the one you need to do for the cruise control but i will show that in a later video and all these other things so if you've got any codes or anything you want to change a lot of the upgrades are done with the underhood electrical center and the rear electrical center and occasionally the instrument control unit uh, yeah and also infotainment center this is all to do with the stereo you can change you know if you want to check faults on the stereo mine has a peculiar one it says left rear speaker open circuit which i don't understand because it was fine no it's not obviously you can change all that and this is the one i did another video earlier about changing the settings on this and that's this is how you find it a few other points and things you can do if you have a mobile phone portal you can, yeah, it gives you information and audio and a dab audio broadcast unit which i would like to fit if i could ever find out how to fit it but anyway that is basically it for the opcom i hope that explains what it is when i mention it so people can understand it and yeah it's a very useful tool Especially if you are upgrading or if you have problems. But anyway, I will say bye bye for now. And hope you enjoy the videos. And thank you for watching.